Okay, well, I'm really excited about this because finally we're going to see one of the big theorems of calculus. So sit back and get ready to be dazzled. Now, you know, we've already seen this great synergy between the integral and the derivative, sort of how they work together in sort of this amazing way. But now we're going to see exactly why that synergy works. And it turns out this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. And it's so huge, it is so big, it actually has two parts. So I'm going to get excited here. But then in the next lecture, I'm going to be off the, off the roof excited. Off the roof excited. That's right, you heard me, off the roof excited. So let me tell you about the fundamental theorem of calculus. There are two parts, and I want to talk about the first part now. Let me actually say the theorem, which I have to admit doesn't sound very exciting. But when we think about what it means, we're going to get really excited. Here is the theorem. So suppose we have a function f of x that's continuous on some interval, closed interval from a to b. And I define a new function. I'm going to call it capital F of x, the new function, which is going to be the integral from a fixed number a, that, that endpoint, all the way up to x. And I'm looking at f of t dt. And x is going to vary anywhere between a and b. So what's going on here? The variable is the upper endpoint of this integral. So I'm going to integrate from a to x. Let's just look at the picture here. So here's the function, f of t. And I'm looking at the area from a out to x. And that thing is actually going to be f of x. So f of x represents the area under the curve, assuming that the thing is positive. Let's not worry about that. So that's the area under the curve. So that's the function, capital F of x. You change x, that's changing the endpoint here. And I get a different area. That changes capital F. OK, then the content of the theorem is then capital F, that function, is continuous on the closed interval AB. That's not very surprising because, of course, the area, if I slide over a little teeny bit, since this is smooth and since this is continuous, then, of course, if I slide over a little bit, a little bit, a little change here, it should be continuous as well. The area is continuous. It's not going to be a big jump somewhere. So that's not even surprising. It's differentiable. So in fact, this function is actually very smooth, which, again, is not really that surprising. But here's the big kicker. If you take the function, capital F, the area function, and take its derivative, what you get is the original function here the function that you're integrating, the integrand. So let's think about that for a second. What it's saying is, if you take the derivative of an integral, you get the original function. So basically, derivative, integral, they undo each other. That's the philosophical bottom line. Now, let's think about what this really is saying. Here's how I think about it, right? What's a derivative? A derivative, we already know, means a rate of change, an instantaneous rate of change. So this is saying the instantaneous rate of change of this crazy function is equal to the original function. What's the crazy function? It's the area under the curve. So what the fundamental theorem of calculus part one is really saying is this. The rate of change of the area under the graph of a function with respect to x is the value of the function itself, right? The derivative of the area equals the function itself. That's philosophically what this is saying. Now, why should we believe that? Well, let me show you that actually this makes complete sense if we just think about it. So let's actually find the derivative. Let's actually compute the derivative of this function and see that the derivative of that function is, in fact, going to be f of x, little f of x. All right, so what's the derivative? Well, this is a great review. It's fundamental theorem of calculus. We should think about the foundations. So what is f prime of x? Well, it's the limit as delta x approaches 0 of capital F of x plus delta x minus capital F of x, all divided by delta x. Right, good. All right, now. What's going on here visually? Well, what's capital F of x plus delta x? It's the area under the curve from A all the way out to x plus delta x. So visually, it looks like this. Now, I'm going to enlarge this to show detail, but you have to promise me you're going to think about this as being just a tiny change. Really, I want the value to be like, like here. That's x plus delta x, but you probably can't see that. So I'm going to be more dramatic about it. But you've got to promise me that really 
this is x plus delta x, which means this little teeny change right here, which you're not supposed to see. If you can see it, then you're cheating. That's delta x. So I have x plus delta x gives me that point. What's, the, what's this value right here? That represents the area under the curve from a all the way out to x plus delta x. Then I have to subtract off capital F of x. That's the area under the curve from a all the way up to here, x. So what's that difference? Well, that difference is what? It's actually the area of the blue. So I take the area of that blue strip, and that's the numerator. And then what do I have to do? I have to divide that by delta x. Well, let's think about that. What's the area of this strip? Remember now, you promised that you're thinking of that strip as being really, really, really thin. So basically, the area of that strip, it's almost like a little teeny rectangle. And what's the area? The area is going to be, remember, that's really thin. So don't look at it here. Think about it way over here. So that area is basically just like a rectangle. It's base times height. The height, remember, it's really way over here. The height is just the value of the function at x, which is f of x. And the base is delta x. So this is approximately equal to, if we let the delta x get small, which is going to get really small, this is approximately equal to what? Well, the, the height. times the base. But then look, I'm dividing by delta x. These cancel. And what's the limit as delta x goes to 0 of f of x? It's just f of x. And so the derivative of the area looks like the value of the function. It actually makes sense. It actually makes sense. This is an absolutely huge theorem whose importance I cannot overstress. It's just huge.